Hello everyone, Rory is here, with Half-Life 2 after long last. Now, I had been playing Half-Life 1 with the intention that I could then play through Half-Life 2. I want to play them all sequentially. <laughs> so, we are starting off right at the start, in City 17, with the beginning of Half-Life 2. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm playing these so that after I get through Half-Life 2, I can then go and do the developer commentaries of Episode 1 and 2. So, let's, let's, let's rise let's. and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Not that I wish to imply you have been sleeping on the job. No one is more deserving <laughs> of a rest, and all the effort in the world would have gone to waste until, well, let's just say your hour has. Come again. The right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. So wake up, Mr. Freeman. Wake up and smell the ashes. I freaking love that intro. See you get on. This is my third transfer this year. Okay, okay, let's talk to this guy. No matter how many times I've been relocated, I never get used to it. Oh, this is my stop. I think I did something like that. Well. Into the line. Into the line, that's it. <laughs> ah! Welcome. Get away from my Welcome face. To City 17. You have chosen, chosen or been chosen? chosen? I know this game too well. I always run over here to like, look at the Vortigaunt. The one Vortigaunt with uh, slave collars on in this game. Or oh, the one that, only one that you see moving around. I've been proud to call yeah. City 17 my home. And so, and I love here to stay, messing around with passing through on your way to the city. It's all to City right, 17. It's safer here. Does he go through there? I think yeah, he does, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Were you the only ones on that train? I'm going to talk to all the NPCs. Overwatch stopped our train in the woods and took my husband for questioning. They said he'd be on the next train. I'm not sure when that was. They're, they're being nice, though, letting me wait for him. <laughs> so she's just waiting there for well a man who's probably not coming. Oh. Yeah. All the telephones have cut wires. Oh, this one you can't pick. Oh, though. I've been playing Quantum Conundrum. I kept trying to click to pick it up. Don't drink the water. They put something in it to, to make you forget. I don't even remember how I got here. No more. <laughs> You never see them go. They're always full. No one ever gets on, but they're always they're always departing, but they never arrive. And the ones that do arrive, they, they never leave. You never see them go. They're always full. No one ever gets on. But they're always... <laughs> I see. They took your suitcase, too. They can't get away with this much longer. <laughs> I have no suitcase. I'm also in... Uh... Not in my HEV suit. Welcome. I'm working up the nerve to Welcome go on. Welcome to City 17. You have chosen or been chosen to relocate. Doctor Breen again. I was hoping I'd seen the last of him in City 14. I, so much I wouldn't say that too loud. This is his base of operations. My administration. Yeah, there's plenty of like in the city world building that happens amongst these um amongst these NPCs. So it's it's vital to or well, it's valuable to listen to them. And so. Whether you are here to stay or pass uh. through on your way to parts unknown, welcome to City 78. It's safe here. 
Yeah, you're intentionally flagged as... You're intentionally flagged as being like... Uh, we need to take you off to the side. <laughs> this must be a mistake. I got a standard relocation coupon just like everybody else. Okay. Yeah, the one combine guy with a different voice. I wonder who, why that might be. You're like, oh no! About that beer I owed you. It's me, Gordon <laughs> Barney from Black Mesa. Hey, sorry for the scare. I had to put on a show for the cameras. I've been working undercover like with civil protection. Ass. I can't take too long or they'll get suspicious. CP, I'm um, way behind on my beating quota. Yes, Barney, what is it? I'm in the middle of a critical test. Sorry, Doc, but look who's here. Great, Great Scott. Scott! Gordon Freeman! Freeman. <laughs> I, expected more warning. I like yeah, how you Isaac and me both, Doc. He was about to board the express to Nova Prospect. Well, Barney, <laughs> what do you intend? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Alex is around here somewhere. She would have a better idea how to get him here. Well, as long as he stays away from checkpoints, we should be okay. Listen, I gotta go, Doc. We're taking enough chances as it is. Very well. And, uh, Gordon, good to see you. Okay, Yay. Gordon. <laughs> You're gonna have to make your own way to Dr. Kleiner's lab. Oh, man, that's what I was afraid of. Get in here, Gordon, before you blow my cover. Pile up some stuff to get through that window and keep going till you're in the plaza. I'll meet up with you later. <laughs> no? You don't hear anything? Okay. Yeah. So, straight off, uh, off the bat, we're greeted to all of the different people. I like this intro because it does a lot with a, in a very short time span. Firstly, I like that they reference the fact that, you know, he says, about that beer I owed you. Because if, if you talk to the, um, if you talk to the, uh, security guards in Half-Life 1, they will, if you talk to them while they're on duty at the start, they're like, uh, catch me later, I'll buy you a beer. <laughs> and it's interesting, Barney is one of the only characters who's, um, from one of the expansion packs for Half-Life 1, and is brought in, you know, he's he's considered canon, he's part of the main uh, lineup of characters. The other expansion, of course, is um, Opposing Force, and in Opposing Force you get, there's Adrian Shepard, who's the main uh, guy you play as, but he doesn't have, like, his character isn't, um, isn't featured anywhere in the rest of the series, um, and the fact that the idea of the nuke going off at the end of Opposing Force isn't sort of necessarily followed up or backed up in any any like sort of serious or obvious way in um, any of the later games. So, yeah, the uh, Blue Shift's Barney Calhoun. <laughs> never! I'll never do your bidding! <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm ready to join civil protection just to get a decent meal. <laughs> You'll have to wait your turn. Ah! Do our benefactors really know what's best for us? What gives them the right to make this kind of decision for mankind? Ah! Why is he following me this time? <laughs> He's still following me. Allow me to address the anxiety I'd like to help you, but it's out of the question. We can't be seen talking. Let us consider the fact that for the first time... Yeah, if you listen to Breen in the section, he's answering questions from supposed concerned citizens. And that idea actually led, well, as far as I can tell, that, that idea was part of what led to um, the uh, a concerned citizen uh, comic? Would you call it a comic? I freaking loved 
what what is essentially yeah I'm going to call it a comic because it's it's like a machinima where it's made in game but it's made to look like a comic with like comic strip ent entries and it followed the uh, followed the story of Norman Froman who is like a Gordon Freeman ripoff <laughs> and he was constantly writing to Breen about his concerns for the for the city <laughs> and so that's why it was it was a, a concerned citizen writing in to Breen it was all written all of the text and stuff was written as though you were um as though it was you know from a, a letter point of view if I talk to you out here we'll both be in trouble <laughs> Yeah, there's lots of stuff you can you can see around this area. <laughs> no, leave me alone. There's some people that come out of the door from oh no, come out from round back. Not talk to you can't talk to them for whatever reason. Anyway, let's move on. Let's not dilly dally dilly dally for too long. Some more people getting beaten. Sorry, I'm gonna hop everywhere. That's what I do. This is how it always starts. First the building, then the whole block. They have no reason to come to our place. Don't worry, they'll find one. <laughs> yeah. I think they, if you talk to some people more, they have more stuff to say. That's freaky. I always find that terrifying. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop. Wait, wait, wait. No, one more, one more. Yeah, when you stand around here, there's like a soundscape or like a... You can just hear subtle sounds of children playing and stuff and... Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> If I play this game like this, I'm gonna be here for ages. Um, bike. Eh. I don't have a flashlight yet, so I can't look at stuff. Okay, let's just keep moving. Because we're in a part where it's, it's a bit cinematic from here, so. I like this. Told you they'd be coming to us next. Just this once, I hope you're wrong. <laughs> I love doing that. I don't know why, I just love doing that. Then you go down here and you can see they're like smashing up the place down there. If you actually come down here and watch, you can see the whole thing unravel. When is it all going to end? Don't worry. Please. It's alright. I feel like you see these two later on in um, as part of the resistance, which is really interesting to see. Like, there's a little reference to the these two, because they're th this you know guys comforting his his girlfriend or his wife or whatever. Um, you actually see them. You see two resistance fighters with the same faces. You know, sometimes you can't always trust the face because um, they're reused in in certain areas. Um, um, but yeah, there's two resistance fighters with the exact same faces. One second. Ah! Ah! Run! Ah. <laughs> um, yeah, there's two resistance fighters that you see later on that are in that exact same position. <laughs> Two resistance fighters. Sorry, I gotta finish my thought process. Uh, thought train of thought. Um, yeah. Two resistance fighters who are in the same, got the same faces. Uh, of course, are in resistance outfits, but they are in that same exact pose where the guy is comforting the woman. I think, or it might be the other way around where the woman's comforting the guy. But I think it's the same, same as the first time. Run! Let's not get shot. Ah! Ah! Don't sh- oh, I got shot. Don't shoot! I've done nothing. 
Yeah, this is a weird area where I always manage to get myself trapped, so I'm just gonna go full force at this. Ah! No! <laughs> Whenever I try and avoid getting hit, I always trap myself or get in weird situations. Dr. Freeman, I presume. Attention. You better hurry. <laughs> the Combine can be slow to wake, but once they're up, you don't want to get in their way. Just imagine me with uh, goatee and and glasses. Dr. And... Kleiner said you'd be coming this way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it occurred to him that you might not have a map. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, how would we supposed to know to come here? Alrighty. I'm Alex Vance. My father worked with you back in Black Mesa. I'm sure you don't remember me, though. Nope. Because <laughs> none of you had few words, proper faces. You? Um, while I do like this game and I like the intro, I, I like the entirety... Remember from Black Mesa? Your nope. old administrator. <laughs> don't get my dad started on Dr. Breen. Once again, another retconned character. Um, Through here. I like almost everything that they did with... Oh, wait. Okay, there. Shush, shush. <laughs> I like what they did with Half-Life 2, and I do like the final game that they have, but the intro that they had for... Well, they, no, not even the intro, just the full narrative that they had for Half-Life 2 in the earlier days is super fascinating and super dark and gritty. I really wish there was a good Half-Life 2 beta mod, because um, I've downloaded a couple of them that, that try to replicate stuff that they had either talked about or stuff that they'd seen or, you know, ripped stuff and then just polished it to make it look better. Uh, but there's no real, like, definitive um, uh, portal, no, it's a portal, Half-Life beta version mod sort of thing. Because um, the themes and the, and the layout and the things that you did and the, the world that they, that they created for Half-Life 2 before they ended up going with this one is super interesting and gritty and I think it fits better with what just you just finished with Half-Life 1. You know, Half-Life 2 beta followed on from Half-Life 1 a lot more smoothly in my mind. Um, and I love that canon, if you will. I love that particular canon. Um, it's a shame that it changed so drastically but I get it. Like these things happen when you when you make um, sequels and you make you know further content. Whenever you make anything, the initial vision is almost never exactly what you end up with. Anyway, let's continue. I always find that like walk backwards really concerning. Funny you showing up on this day in particular. Eh, beat her to the punch. Yeah, they showed off. They did a whole lot of like People stuff to animate her. Foot. It's a dangerous route to my father's lab through the old canals. Yeah, escape on foot. Yeah. Today we're finally on the verge of having a better way. Mmm. <laughs> Here, let me buy you a drink. There's a lot of like showing off the animation systems they had in place for this game. Oh, and by the way. <laughs> Nice to finally meet you. Nice to finally meet you too. <laughs> Immediately, I'm going. Oh no, I'll I'll follow this properly. Where did she get to? Lamar, come out of there. Uh oh, everything all right, Doctor Kleiner? Oh, <laughs> he bumps his head. Well, uh, almost all right. Lamar has gotten out of her crate again. If I didn't know better, I'd suspect Barney of trapping and my goodness, Gordon Freeman. It really is you, isn't it? <laughs> I found him wandering around outside. Bit of a troublemaker, isn't he? <laughs> we owe a great deal to Dr. Freeman, even if trouble does tend to follow in his wake. <laughs> he just pushed me out of the way. I must say, Gordon, you come at a very opportune time. Alex has just installed the final piece for our resurrected teleport. I can't take any credit for the breakthrough, Doctor. Nonsense. Your talents surpass your loving. <laughs> Let's just see if this thing works, okay? Well, is he here? <laughs> there you are. Man, Gordon, you stirred up the hive. 
We can't yeah. keep him here long, Doc. Just It'll briefly. Everything we've worked for. Before I do anything further. Uh, that's right, Barney. This is a red letter day. We'll inaugurate yeah. the new teleporter, teleporter with a double transmission. You mean it's working? For real this time? Dun, dun, dun. I still have nightmares about that cat. Can't Not zoom in yet. <laughs> I was going to zoom in dramatically. Cat? We've made major strides <laughs> since then. Major strides. What cat? Sorry, I'm missing dialogue. Since he's not taking the streets, you might as well get him out of his civvies. What? Oh, Barney yeah. talks about a nightmare he has about a cat. About Barney, that cat. I'll give you the honor. What cat? I've got to get back on my shit. But okay. <laughs> yeah. If you want to see this, this has been out for a long time. You can play it yourself if you if you don't want me talking over this Here intro. We go. Ah, damn it! Get it off me! <laughs> Come on. There you are. I thought you got rid of that pet. Certainly not. <laughs> Certainly not. Woman. She's debeat and completely harmless. The worst she might do is attempt to couple with your head fruitlessly. Get that thing away from me. Yeah, yeah my briefly it makes up, up. the same noises as no, it does in Half-Life 1. There. No, no. Careful, Lamar. Those are quite fragile. Oh, fie. It'll be another week before I can coax her out of there. Yeah. Longer if we're lucky. <laughs> Barney, yeah. you're not an animal person. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, it's funny because um, oh, shush. Well, Gordon, go oh. ahead. I'll explain it in a second. Yay! I can zoom in now. <laughs> well, Gordon, I see your yeah. HEV suit still fits you like a glove. At least the glove parts do. <laughs> I've made a few modifications, but I'll oh, just dear. acquaint you with the essentials. Now, let's see. The Mark V hazardous environment suit has been redesigned for comfort and utility. Oh dear. Doc, we don't have time for this. I keep wanting to pause it. Okay, I'm going to pause it briefly, because I wanted to mention, um, it's interesting that Barney is the one who is afraid of the barnacles, because... I mean, Kleiner, I don't know why Kleiner is not afraid of them. Well, he's probably not afraid of them because of the scientific, uh, you know, his scientific mind, but um, I find it interesting that Barney is the one who's afraid of them because he, along with Gordon, and then if, if he was here, Shepard from uh, Opposing Force, they're the ones who came up against the aliens when they first arrived and had to fight them. And, you know, they were their enemies. Um, interesting little note. This is a scrolling... Uh, it's either an animation or a texture, depending on how they set it up. I'm not actually sure. But it keeps going when you pause, which I think is funny. Um, Get that suit juiced up, Gordon. Yeah. Good idea. The, There's a if I imagine that if um, Gordon was able to talk, he I would be modified with... modified your suit to draw power from combine energy outlets, which yeah. are plentiful wherever they patrol. Yeah. Um, if Gordon was able to speak, I imagine he would uh, show on the road. share Barney's distaste for them. Yeah, I like that he rotates this little, um, picture, and it activates this little secret. Um, if you take a closer look, you've got a few scientists. you got Eli Vance. you got the one of the scientist guys who is common in Half-Life 1. Uh, common face. I'm not sure who this is supposed to be, but you got Kleiner, and then you got Gordon, and then another random scientist, and another random scientist. But I just think it's really interesting that you got Gordon, Kleiner, and uh, Eli all in one picture. Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> Hold your horses. Those are nags, by the way, when they repeat stuff like that to you. She's like, you're coming? Gordon, you're coming? <laughs> why don't you position yourself near the panel That's what they call a nag. Wait for my word. Isaac, are you there? Yes, yes, Eli. Bit of a <laughs> hold up on this end. You'll never guess who found his way into our lab this morning. Uh, that's not who I think it is, is it? Indeed it is, and it's our intention to send him packing straight away in the company of your lovely daughter. Are you ready for us, Dad? You're all set on this end. Then let's do it. Let's see. The massless field flux should self-limit, and I've clamped yeah. the manifold parameters. Naturally, the L teleporter works perfectly fine for Alex. Could hardly be more ideal. That's what you said last time. <laughs> All the stuff about the cats. I'm just gonna straight away fix it up. Gordon, throw the switch. Gordon, go right ahead. 
This of course leads to a bad, a silly joke. Very again. Good. Final sequence. Commencing now. I can't look. Did it work? See for yourself. Hey, Doc. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> you think they'd My test it on some objects out. first Fantastic before <laughs> well, <laughs> putting, I can't putting someone so credit. valuable. Dr. Freeman proved an able <laughs> assistant. Let's go ahead and bring Gordon. Oh, dear. Right you are. Speak to you again well, in I did a few was... moments. Good job, Gordon. Throwing that switch and all. I can see your MIT education really pays for itself. <laughs> all right, Bonnie. Your turn. <laughs> so. Thanks. So it's such a valid, um, like, criticism. Not criticism, but, you know. All you did was put a plug something in and fl flick a switch, which is... I believe that joke comes from the fact that Gordon Freeman is, like, a... in, in the anti-mass spe spectrometer. Yes, um, indeed. In Half-Life 1. Bon voyage, and best of luck in your future endeavors. Final sequence. And of course. He gets like transported into this desert. Save me! Tip, pull me out! Something is drawing him away. What's the meaning of this? Who are you? Hello, Breen. Get in here. But certain it was Freeman Freeman. Ah, and then the only uh, time you ever see one of these. He didn't come through. Then where is he? Behind you. <laughs> I love that screen. Okay. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> get away from me. No. Um, crap, what the hell was I saying? I was saying something in the middle there. I've completely forgotten. Editing Roy will have to fix it up for me. <laughs> okay, so, we'll leave it right there. We'll pause it, save it, and we'll leave it there. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure I was about to say something about <laughs> the teleporting. Um, oh, I think it was partly to do with the... You know, you're you're halfway through teleporting to Black Mesa East, what they call Black Mesa East, or um, uh, Eli Vance's lab, and of course it fails, and you end up outside of Kleiner's lab. Interesting, random thing to note is that uh, if you were able to get through there, you'd cut out a huge portion of the game, but also um, some of the stuff they show when you're uh, phasing back and forth is super interesting. The one where you arrive on like a, what looks like a desert and Lamar like jumps out and gets lost. Firstly, that's actually another thing I was going to mention. Lamar somehow manages to find its way back to Kleiner. How that is possible, I have no idea. <laughs> but nevertheless, some of those things that they show in that teleportation phase are like little remnants of the old story as well. Like I believe that area where, the, where Lamar jumps out is supposed to be a bit of like wasteland, which is what used to be in the game. There used to be a huge amount of the game, well, all, there is a, still a huge amount of the game where you're on the beaches, but in the original version, you weren't just going to be on beaches, because there actually wasn't, or there was, there was all but no ocean left on Earth, um, in the original story. The Combine had completely harvested all of the water off of the surface of the Earth, and so, there were these vast, vast wastelands that used to be water, you know, used to be ocean. <laughs> and so there's all these shots of, like, uh, oil pipes or, um, you know, just huge boats or whatever that are completely stranded just out in what looks like a desert. What looks like a savanna or a desert. And uh, I believe that little shot where Lamar is jumping away is supposed to be, like, a little remnant of it. Um... Because it looks a bit like a wasteland, a little desertous wasteland. Um, 
but of course that never that ended up not amounting to anything in the in the final version because they took out the, a lot of the uh, combine harvesting the earth as part of the story because that was a huge part of the original story. There was the uh, one of the first things or one of the things you go d one of the main points of um, attraction, I guess, or one of the main uh, plot points was you going to the air filtration. Uh, or the, no, the air exchange facility was a huge part of the game. Uh, you were going to this air exchange facility because the Combine were essentially pumping all of the oxygen out of the Earth and sending it to their home, you know, their home instead of uh, Earth. And so the oxygen was getting really, really poor and everyone had to wear gas masks and stuff because otherwise they would, they would uh, suffocate and they wouldn't get enough oxygen. Um... And so one of the main, yeah, one of the main plot points was you going to destroy the uh, air exchange facility to stop them from pumping any more oxygen out of the earth. Um, and yeah, they, there's a bunch of different ways in which they were harvesting the earth that ended up being basically completely removed. And so they added water back into the beach areas, I think, as, as a slightly more convenient way of locking the character towards a path instead of having this like having to bl uh, block off the player somehow from getting across these vast deserts, whatever. Uh, nevertheless, enough talking about that. If you're interested in the beta stuff, which I probably will continue to talk about uh, throughout the series, um, uh, I would recommend either looking up a digital copy or trying to get your hands on Raising the Bar, the book, ra the Half-Life 2 Raising the Bar. Actually, one second. Okay, for reference, <laughs> this is it. This book here, oh god, my blue screen is messing that up um yeah basically this this book <laughs> uh half-life 2 raising the bar um is super interesting because it talks about all of the stuff that they were working on you know before they actually really uh finalized the game so there's some super interesting stuff about the aliens the zen aliens and there's really interesting stuff about um yeah the original narrative the original story uh yeah, I would definitely, if you have the money or if you have, or if you're able to get a, your hands on a copy of it, I would definitely recommend reading it. Or just going to like the Combine Overwiki or one of those places and just having a look at the stuff about the beta because there's so much that was going on in the original beta that, you know, never eventuated to anything because uh, the story had to be altered and lot uh, for the final game. Uh, but yeah, enough rambling. If you like what you saw, hit like. If you want to see more from more Half-Life stuff, you want to see more of me, <laughs> for some reason, for whatever reason, uh, then subscribe. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and as always.